A child is sledding on a sled at 1.5 meters per second to the right. You stop the sled by pushing on it for 0.50 seconds in a direction opposite to its motion. If the mass of the child and sled is 35 kilograms, what average force do you need to stop to apply to stop the sled? Use concepts of impulse and momentum. Okay, so since they tell us right off the bat that we're going to use impulse and we're going to use momentum, let's go ahead and write those equations out. So we know that J is what we use to symbolize impulse. We know that's equal to the average force, which is what we'll be looking for in this case, times the time. And those are both equal to the change in momentum. Okay, so normally we, or what we've done in the past, I guess, we've said that J is equal to the average force times time and we use that relationship or if we use the change in momentum and set that equal to J and use that relationship but in this case we're going to use the average force times time and set it equal to the change in momentum so let's go ahead and write down the stuff that they gave us first off so they tell us let's see um, the mass the mass of the child in the sled is 35 kilograms. They tell us the initial velocity is equal to 1.5 meters per second, and they say it's to the right. And then we know the final velocity, final, is equal to zero meters per second, because they say, we stopped the sled, and they tell us we stopped it right up here. Okay, so zero meters per second. And then they also tell us that we pushed on it opposite the direction it's motion for 0 0.50 seconds. All right, and let me put on here just as well. Force average equals question mark. So we know what we're looking for. All right, so now let's go ahead and draw a little picture so we can see it. So. There's my sled, put a little kid in here. And then they tell us that, woo, that was bad head. Okay, so they tell us, there we go, that's a little better, that we stop the sled directly opposite to the kid and we want that average force. And they tell us that we do it in 0 0.5 seconds. And then they tell us that the kid is moving along at 1.5 meters per second. Okay, so we said that we are going to use, actually let me change color. Come up here, let's do red. Okay, so we are going to use the average force times time equal to the change in momentum. And remember, change of anything is always final minus initial, so I'm going to go ahead and write it that way. So the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Now let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. Actually, side note, whenever I'm solving for problems, I actually prefer to solve for it algebraically before I plug anything in because it's way easier to catch mistakes when you have variables than when you have random numbers plugged in and so because you'll go ahead and be moving everything around and if you'll go at the end and be like what in the heck is 0 0.5 I don't remember anymore I don't I don't know if it's in the right spot so let's go ahead and solve it algebraically in this case it's pretty simple we're trying to isolate the average force so if we divide by time those go away and then we divide by time so now we have the average force is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum times time. Now, before I start plugging in numbers, I'm going to make one other quick note. If you think about it, impulse, remember, is always the mass times the velocity. But we said that the final velocity was zero. So if we times the mass times zero velocity, this is going to go away. So that leaves us finally with the average force is equal to the negative initial momentum divided by the change in time. 
Let me go ahead and slide this up. And now let's go ahead and actually plug in the numbers. So we have F average is equal to negative 35 kilograms times initial velocity is 1.5 meters per second divided by the change in time, which they tell us is 0 0.50 seconds. So let's see, that will give us For the top, we'll have 52.5, negative, and let's see, that is momentum. So we have kilograms times meters per second, and then that's all divided by 0 0.5 seconds. So the final answer gives us a negative 105 newtons. Now be careful. Because when we're thinking about this, when, when I first approached the problem anyways, I was thinking, because they say the sled's going to the right, so I was thinking a big long x-axis up here, and the kid is going in the positive x-direction, and our force is pushing back in the negative x-direction. But if you plug this negative into mastering physics, what they're going to say is, hey, we actually didn't have a coordinate grid on this question, so whatever value you get at the end, just give us the positive value for the average force. So our final answer will be a positive 105 newtons.